if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I do not understand who votes for these people. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The NDP and the Conservatives both sent their uh, finance critics to Vasa Capellos on her uh, show Power Play. And she was asking them about this proposed GST cut, this proposed pause on the GST, which I did a video on. And I guess I'm going to have to do a little bit more commenting on. However, when when asked, when the NDP finance minister of MP Backrat was asked, about his party's position of saying one thing and then doing another, like of saying, oh, you know, Trudeau is a terrible blah, 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 but then not doing anything to make Trudeau leave office. He went on this kind of, I don't know, this little, like this strange little, little jaunt in his mind where he was just going to be able to tell Vashi Capellas all of the normal things that they would tell the press and then not have any, any blowback or any, any confrontation on it. So, you know, it's three or four little segments of him making a complete mess of either the political position of the NDP or the lack thereof. Greg, and I have to ask you quite bluntly, why is your party supporting the Liberals on this when uh, your leader, Mr. Singh, was explicit that it did not go nearly as far as you would like to see it go. You wanted it to cover more stuff and you wanted it to be permanent. Why do you continue to support the Prime Minister and his party when you say this falls so short? Uh, swath of the Canadian public that's struggling to make ends meet. Uh, it appears the Prime Minister has caved to that demand and put forward, in, in classic Liberal fashion, put forward a, a, a lesser offer to Canadians. You're trying to tell me that he caved, but then you're saying that he gave a lesser offer. So he didn't cave. He just gave you a little bit, like a lick and a promise, as they would say in my generation. This is uh, not what you asked for. This is not doing what you wanted to do. And you want to sit there and tell everybody that you did, you've accomplished something. I mean, am I the only one who thinks that this guy should be paying attention like he, they, like maybe he should have gotten the questions ahead of time so he could prepare an answer that makes sense. I mean, that's just that was just the start of it. He, man, in the in the three four minutes that she asked him specifically, because she went from one to the other, right? He he tripped over his own words. I don't know. Every time he opened his mouth. So we're coming into the Christmas season. Families are going to be stretched. Here's something that's going to, going to give them some help. Uh, I think it would be irresponsible not to, to support that and get them the help that they need. But aren't you just also sending the message to Canadians that if the Liberals do a tiny bit of what the NDP likes, then you're willing to keep them in power? And isn't that a difficult message for Canadians to reconcile with? This isn't about sending messages. It's not about the, the kind of political games that Michael was talking about. They're looking at their paychecks and the cost of things in the store, and they're stressed. This is what they're telling me. They're like, we're worried. We're not going to be able to make ends meet. We're not going to be able to put presents under the tree. We're not going to be able to pay our bills. Uh, this is an incredibly stressful time of year for people. So on the one hand, it's not about sending a message that you're helping people. But on the other hand, people are telling you that they're giving you the message that they're having a hard time making ends meet. Who votes for these guys? Honestly, do you not ask them a couple of questions or do you just look at the party logo and then cast your vote that way? I mean, don't you want people in your in your government that are represented to, to you that have the, you know, the ability to, I don't know, think their way through a sentence? Oh, it's not about sending messages. Really? Then in the very next breath, oh, no, we're trying to give people the, you know, help at Christmas. So what's the message you're not sending? You're not sending the message that you think you're going to take, save a couple of bucks on Christmas goods that you can't buy any of it until the 15th of December. Most people like to put up their tree on the 1st of December. People want to have stuff around. They want ambiance. I mean, you're not, you're barely going to be able to make, and all the food that they were going to buy will always also is already GST free. So maybe you made it so that a uh, you know a couple of kids can buy some cookie or bake some cookies at home, I guess. But otherwise, you didn't really accomplish anything except you you're, you did expose the liberals did expose one thing. They are the economy is in a bad way. People are not spending money, 
and they are getting desperate about it. They're getting so desperate that they're willing to, to try and trick you into making purchases. Vashi, to her credit, called them out on it, right? Now, as many of you know, I, I have a, I can't have a hard time getting a read on Vashi because one minute she's doing what's right by Canadians and the next minute she is completely totaling the company line. So, however, in this case, she did confront him on the absurdity of the NDP position. And his answer is shocking, is, a, is an understatement. I mean, I had to listen to it twice to make sure that that's exactly what he said. I couldn't believe it. Because today, actually, in a way, Mr. Singh did. He said, when I'm prime minister, I will make it permanent. Sure, He absolutely. could be prime minister if your party was willing to force an election, but yeah. you're unwilling to because you don't think he's going to be prime minister. Coming, coming into Christmas, I think the question, whether Canadians want a, an election at Christmas or they want $250 and, and a cut to the GST on, on things like kids' clothes. Do you really think they're clothes. willing to trade the opportunity to get rid of a prime minister that your leader says is a total failure? for 250 bucks? There's absolutely going to be an election and Canadians are going to have a chance uh, to, to voice their opinion at the polls. They think that they can buy your vote. And that, right there, was a guy thinking that you would rather get $250 and save 100 bucks on GST over 60 days instead of getting rid of a government that is causing you so much hardship. Can you imagine... The, 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 what these guys talk about when nobody's listening. Can you imagine the dialogue that comes out of their mouth? This is how little they respect your opinion. This is how little they think of you. They think that for $250, you're going to have big dollar signs in your eyes and you're going to forget. The, the part that makes me laugh is they think that all of a sudden, because they're going to take 5% off the taxes, that you've got all this money just sitting around, right? Like you're just, you know, you, you've been, you've been hoarding it. You know, you're hoarding it, right? And now that they took this little bit off, all of a sudden, you're just going to tighten, loosen up your wallets, right? In their heads, right? You're not been, you haven't been robbing from Peter to pay Paul for three or four years, right? Like they just think that you just, you're just swimming in money like Scrooge McDuck. Then they think that, okay, so we'll, we'll offer them this and that will keep them happy until we can, you know, we can stall for another year, get another 150 grand, get all of the other things, all the perks. Jagmeet Singh has so far charged $66,000 to the Canadian taxpayer for his expenses this year. Sixty-six grand. That's more than probably two people make. And like in, there are, there, I can absolutely go to two full-grown adults right now and say they don't make that put together. And he's just using that for expenses. It's got nothing to do with his salary. Then his finance minister comes on here and says, no, the Canadians don't want an election. They would rather have this $250 and a little bit of savings on GST because they've, they've just been waiting for that to go shopping. It is ridiculous, the, the, the mindset of these people, how out of touch you have to be to not understand what is going on, to not understand the actual hardships that people are going through. He's saying to you, oh, people are worried about it, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, let's get rid of the carbon tax and let's see if that has a strong impact. That's not even talking about the idea of how carbon tax is what the conservatives have been talking about. Now all of a sudden Jagmeet Singh is talking about a tax. Excuse me, Mr. Man of the people with your Rolex and your 5 Series Beamer. The GST is not going to be the, the uh, golden arrow that you think it's going to be. The carbon tax is destroying the economy, and as a result, it's destroying the lives of 40 million, okay, maybe maybe 39 million people. Maybe there's a million rich people in this country that are making a lot of money off it. But the rest of us are getting crushed. You tell me down in the comments, would you rather have $250? Or do you think it would be great if Santa was to bring you an election for Christmas? Our leader has been very clear that an NDP government would do much more. In fact, the, the proposal... But you're okay with we... one doing less now. <laughs> right? I mean, say what you want, but she's, she's pretty quick that way. That's why she should be calling more, more of them to task, because we know that, that she has the ability. Anyway, 
right? He's like, oh no, we're going to do more when you elect Jagmeet Singh as prime minister next year or whatever, after another year of hardship and suffering, after we've increased the carbon tax a little bit more, after we've made life so expensive that it is worse than a, than a novel. I mean, there are, there are, there are Disney villains who treat their population better than we are being treated by the liberal NDP government. But she just said, well, you're fine with letting that go for now. And that's the thing, right? They keep talking to you like that, but they, they don't have any problem leaving the suffering, leaving the, the, the troubles, leaving the hardships. They don't, they're not doing a thing to get them out of the way. These, talk, these things that they're talking about, oh, we're going to take the GST off of alcohol. Or, who can afford it? We're going to take the GST off of, you know, books, books and magazines. Like where in your mind are people buying those things? It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Oh, we're going to take the GST off potato chips. Yeah, that's probably about the only thing that's going to sell, right? Because people need the potato because one bag of potato chips might keep them fed for two days. Unbelievable. These, these millionaires running around telling you that it's okay. Here's a little pittance. Let them eat cake, huh? All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.